Welcome to another coaching wisdom pod. We have Lana Walsh. Uh, she is founder of the same named business as her, Lana Walsh Coaching. So yes. she does um, sleep optimization. I would describe it that way and helps folks with insomnia. I had insomnia once when I was younger because I watched a, a satanic movie. Actually, it was a documentary and I was scared to shit. And <laughs> I think I couldn't sleep well for like three to four months, right? It really affected my little psyche. And the way that I got to sleep, actually, it was hot baths, you know? That was my mm -hmm. method back in the days, but that's pretty bad. Um, mm -hmm. Nowadays, I sleep less this year. I started with my buddies this year. We have these retreats and they were like, yeah, I asked their insights at the beginning of the, the year and they were like, the human body can function on very low amount of sleep. And me, I've always been on the school of sleeping more um, to, yeah, just optimize my brain, my energy and so forth. But I feel that in the last year, I've also, I also like kind of sailed a bit too comfortably. So this year I was like, yeah, I'm going to give it my all. And that's what I'm doing. Um, so you might see these things under my eyes, but I'm excited to discuss that with Lana today. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by podfire.com. Podfire.com, if you want to start scale or be invited to podcast or even develop sponsors for your podcast, podcasts are pretty cool. We're having one right now, if you didn't know, mm -hmm. and you can learn from them. You can connect with cool people like Lana. Uh, you can grow your audience, grow community get leads and even get clients. So podpire.com, if you want to start scale, be invited to pod. Lana, I'm glad to have you on. Can you tell us a bit more about yourself and a bit more about your coaching business? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and talk to you about sleeping less and if that's good for you or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a sleep and insomnia expert. I suffered from insomnia for over 30 years. And when I finally found the solution, it became my passion to share it with everybody. And so I do speaking, I do podcasts, and then I help people fix their sleep so that they can go to bed, fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up and feel great. And that's what I do. <laughs> so first question, how much hours did you sleep yesterday? And qualitatively, was it a good night of sleep? Well, as a matter of fact, I did not sleep very good last night, but that was because I had a funeral yesterday and Ooh. I drank excessive amounts of alcohol, which is very bad for your sleep, by the way. Um, you know, you may pass out from drinking too much like I did at first, but it actually decreases deep sleep and REM sleep and it makes your sleep much lighter the later in the night it is. So you're more likely to wake up and wake up more frequently. So it wasn't very good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you for the candor here. So on my site, I'm pulling out my Aura Ring app. Um, mm -hmm. But truth be told, I take the ring off uh, at night because it, it flashes a green light that is super fucking annoying. I don't know why they put that in there because you see the full green light when you sleep, oh. you know, and then sometimes yeah. you see it flash red uh, because it's low battery. So that is stupidity at its core there. Uh, yeah. That's a multi-million dollar company, by the way. Uh, they make a fortune also because they charge um, $5 per month. And that is my wedding ring, by the way. So uh, theoretically, I'm going to pay $5 a month forever. Um, <laughs> that being said, yeah, yeah uh, it's, I mean, I might my wife might buy me another wedding ring or something later on. Who mm -hmm. knows? Um, but my sleep is crap nowadays. I mean, cr crap. Okay, let me rewind the clocks here. Um it's low. It's not crap though. Um, it's so it's like around, I think six hours or seven. I'm going quite hard nowadays. So I'm, I'm a, an experimenter. I used to sleep nine hours in average for the last seven years. Um, if not more, uh, the thing is I used to wake up tired when I would do that. Plus sometimes I would get in bed and it would take me very long to fall asleep. Nowadays, I fall asleep in three minutes and I, I wake up and I don't have a headache, which is quite imp important because back mm -hmm. in the days I used to wake up at, after uh, my eight hours, let's call it on a weekday or an eight hour study. And I, I would have this headache. Um, and yeah, so anyway, there's a bunch of factors in there. 
But generally speaking, what, um, what tips do you have for CEOs, founders uh, that are busy like me that want to crunch uh, work, be, product, be productive, obviously? What sleep tips do you have for them? Well, first of all, I want to say if you are sleeping nine hours and you don't need nine hours of sleep, that's why you were having trouble going to sleep at night because you're sleeping more than you needed and your body wasn't ready to go to bed at night. So the first thing is, um, it's not about the number of hours you sleep. It's about how you feel and how the quality of the sleep you get. So if you're sleeping six hours, you're sleeping through the night um, and you're feeling good throughout the day, meaning you don't feel tired or drowsy or you don't nod off during boring, monotonous tasks, you don't need an alarm clock to wake up, you don't feel like you need to catch up on the weekend, then you're getting enough sleep. So I don't want people to get caught up in the number because when we get caught up in the number, that can sometimes cause anxiety. So it comes down to, can you go to sleep? Can you stay asleep? Are you functional during the day? Now, the other thing I wanna be wary of too, less sleep doesn't equal more productivity. It actually decreases your ability to be productive because your brain is actually most affected by sleep or lack of sleep. We become irritable, which causes a lot of problems. We have more difficulty thinking or focusing. Most people become less productive and unmotivated when they don't get enough sleep. So you really wanna make sure you're getting enough sleep for yourself. Now, tips, um, stress is the number one reason people can't sleep. So if you do not engage in some regular stress reduction techniques, whether that's exercise, meditation, journaling, um, yoga, whatever it is that you do, make sure you're doing that on a regular basis because stress will cause even the best sleepers to have trouble sleeping. Yeah. Got a tip, a couple of tips for that. So two things I've been seeing out of that low sleep experiment obviously we can crunch more work which is somewhat satisfying um but sometimes yes my brain goes on off and i can see that on the weekend when i sleep more i i recover on the weekends a bunch of folks don't recommend to do that right sleeping more on the weekends but that's at least where i i sort of cover my deficit um I sleep, I see my brain sometimes being tired, you know, especially at the end of the day, I eat once a day, but overall it's good. My physical shape, maybe I get more gains uh, muscle wise when I sleep more, uh, there's mm -hmm. more testosterone, but the good thing is, and the thing I was about to mention is that I feel that between the nine hours and the six, there's this valley of, of depth for me. It's either sleep a, a high amount of time and then I feel good the next morning or sleep less and I, I still feel good. If I sleep anywhere in between, I get this headache sort of when I wake up. Um, and for just one last thing before I, I let you uh, comment on, on everything that I said, if it's good or bad or any comments you have. One tip that I have to get to bed nowadays that is super efficient Obviously, I think that, like you said, it was related to me sleeping too much. I think that's a good part of it. But I also used to read business books before I would get to bed. And these were quite technical. Um, so it's like, okay, yeah, I need to do that tomorrow in my business. Um, I sort of maxed out these books. I, I didn't get a lot of value from them. And yes, they generated business thoughts and then i would uh, close my eyes and i would start thinking about business and so forth and then one hour uh, and a half later i would still not be asleep nowadays what i do i put my head on the pillow and i read uh wikipedia articles and i use this app called pocket so i can just save uh, another wikipedia link in the wikipedia link so i can go in this rabbit hole so much so that nowadays i'm reading about pirates you know, um, and what better story than a pirate stealing a $400 million treasure to put you asleep? You know, mm -hmm. it is somewhat related to business. You're getting insights from there and social mm -hmm. insights, not only business. And it's long enough to put you to sleep. Um, so what do you think about these strategies of mine? Yeah, so I think when it comes to what you do before bed, 
in the hour before bed, it has to be something that is preparing you for bed. And so what you talked about earlier about the horror movie keeping you awake for four months, you know, if if that stresses you out, don't watch horror shows before bed, you know, but also then be aware of what you are consuming. So when you're reading a technical book, something that you want to learn and, and be really pay attention to, that can sometimes be keep you awake as well, because now you want to like, you're trying to learn, you're engaging your brain. So you want to be careful of like what you're consuming. And that includes like social media, that includes having important conversations with your partner, you don't want to be talking about your financial troubles or your problems with your kids in that hour before bed, because that can cause you to stay awake and ruminate and worry and be stressed. So what you do in that hour before bed is very important to make sure it's all about helping you relax, helping you get ready to go to bed. And if you do the same thing every day, then it actually becomes this habit and a signal to the brain that it's, oh, you know what, this is what we do when we get ready to go to sleep. So it helps you go to sleep over time. So that's, it's very important. Disclaimers, um, me, when I mentioned my stuff, you know, I've been biohacking for like the past decade. So like the advice that I give is like probably not that good for people that are starting their sleep journeys. But nowadays I feel like I can like work on my laptop with like a blue light on my face right before bed. And as long as I'm reading that Wikipedia afterward, even if I have a tough conversation, I can still go to sleep mm -hmm. like a baby. Um, but yeah, that's probably not the best advice. One, um, just one more tip on the Wikipedia reading thing. If you had a stressful days, right? Happens to me, happens to everyone. And you had one of these tough conversations and you've made the mistakes to read your emails right before they had PS, don't ever do that. I don't check my emails before going mm -hmm. to bed. Uh, because some of that can stress me, right? If a client is like unhappy and I'm like, oh shit, is he going to ask for a mm -hmm. refund or something? Um, mm -hmm. That that can stress me out. Uh, I don't do that. But if there's more stress, like me, I'll just read a tad longer until um, I have endorphins secreted by my brain and melatonin in my brain naturally. You know, when you're dozing off, that's where I stop reading. Mm -hmm. And if I am like that, I am certainly not going to, tell my competitive brain to finish reading the Wikipedia mm -hmm. article. As soon as I'm dozing off, I will shut my eyes closed. And that's why I can get to sleep in like under a minute nowadays. Uh, mm -hmm. That's an important tip. Another good one is physical activity. I remember back in the days, like not doing sports and just not sleeping as well. Because the my theory on that is quite simple, is that the body will, will try to shut down itself to try to recover uh, these broken muscles um, quicker. So exercise, hard exercise, like at least 10 minutes uh, high intensity training uh, is highly recommended. Uh, what else would you recommend, Lena, for folks to sleep better? Yeah, so exercise is definitely good because your body does heal when it's sleeping. Uh, eating proper food, like it's amazing how much nutrition and good uh, proper gut health affects your sleep. Um, but don't eat within three hours before bed, because that can, you know, digestion slows down after sleep onset. So that can cause you difficulty sleeping. So but having a good healthy diet, getting sunshine, people don't realize how much um, the sunshine is important for regulating our sleep cycle. It regulates our circadian rhythm and everything. So you want to make sure you're getting enough sunlight during the day, um, especially first thing in the morning. When you first get up, make sure you're opening your blinds and letting that sun in because that stops melatonin production and it starts your circadian rhythm has a cycle. It gets that um, kicked off. So that's also important. Um, having a proper schedule. I mean, you, you hear it all the time, stick to a schedule, a bedtime and a, and a wake up time. And that all is part of the circadian rhythm. Your body wants to be in a habit, a, a rhythm, and it connects everything. Your circadian rhythm is your internal clock. It's the main one is in the brain, but just about every 
cell in your body has its own circadian rhythm and all of these clocks are timed together. So when you try to disrupt it by going to bed later on the weekend, especially because you know, you're out with friends and then try to get up earlier to go to school or work on Monday, it's hard because your, your body's not ready to do those things. So you're, it really wants to stay in a rhythm. And so that's really important. Right. <laughs> I think that, you know, pertaining to insomnia, I think it was just like my young brain constantly sabotaging itself. The brain is so powerful. And if you don't understand that weapon, you constantly are like self-stabbing yourself. So in that case, it was just popping satanic uh, images uh, in front of my eyes and imagining mm -hmm. that I was being watched by a, a Satan cultist uh, right in front of my bed, right? So, and that was spiking cortisol. And then again, and then again, mm -hmm. and then again, never stopped. Yeah. You know, how can you sleep with cortisol in your vein? It's just like when you eat some food that uh, is like full of bacterias. Uh, well, these bacterias, they disrupt your microbiome. There's some brain cells in there, generates cortisol. And then next thing you know, you ate something that is troubling your sleep. Uh, in your mm -hmm. case, it was the the alcohol, uh, but that, that is a different mechanism. Although it does affect mm -hmm. a mi gut microbiome uh, we've mm -hmm. uh, seen in studies. Um, the, the point is, like, I think I can sleep well nowadays, pretty much whatever I do, even if I have a fight with someone, because I've worked on my brain so much in the past couple of years, first with coaches, then with uh, psychotherapists. Nowadays, the greatest therapy that I guess it is this podcast, you know, mm -hmm. I get to speak yeah. to 10 to 15 people a day so that I don't only get insights about business, but about life, how to think, how to handle myself, how to face tough situations you know so i would highly recommend folks um to find to find help and heal up mentally I, I think that will fix a lot of it what do you think about that yeah well sleep and mental health are completely interrelated um mental health challenges come with sleep problems and sleep problems come with mental health challenges, right? Uh, about 50% of people with insomnia have depression, anxiety, or psychological stress. 75% of people with depression and 90% of people with PTSD have insomnia. Like it's just, it's completely interrelated. So having a strong mental health, um, anything that you can do to help with reducing your stress and anxiety will in turn help you with your sleep you just we just can't sleep when we're under stress it's our that cortisol level is elevated and that means your your body is more active your brain is more active when we have that extra cortisol and that makes it very difficult to sleep so yeah it's definitely one of the biggest challenges that my clients face when i talk to them and it's the very first thing we work on is reducing stress and recognizing stress that's another big factor when it comes to psychological stress, our brain doesn't understand when it ends, right? Like we think, oh yeah, that fight was last week. I apologize to my partner. I don't have to deal with it anymore. But your subconscious brain is actually still thinking about it because it doesn't have a shutoff point. When we're under a physical stress, you know, we survive the near miss car accident. Our brain goes, okay, we're safe. But those psychological stressors, the brain doesn't understand that it's over. And so it keeps the cortisol levels elevated. But then what also keeps the cortisol elevated is when you can't sleep. When you're lying there thinking, I'm, I'm going to go to sleep, or I just need to go to sleep, or if I just stay here, I'm going to fall asleep, that actually raises your cortisol level too. So yeah, it's really hard to, um, it, you just can't sleep with that cortisol level as high. So doing anything you can to help with your mental health, your your stressors, your anxieties, your frustrations, all of those things will actually help you sleep. <laughs> hmm. And patience, I would say, which is like mm -hmm. empathy and patience will bring you a very, very long way. And that is learned, you know, that's mm -hmm. not created. Try to teach someone patience in one day. They'll be like, fuck it. You know why? <laughs> uh, <laughs> that doesn't yeah. help me. I think it takes a really long time to be patient with yourself with others for example right now i'm having this puppy you know educating mm -hmm. a puppy might take like six uh, 12 months 
um, they're going through some stuff themselves, you know, and it's training, training, mm -hmm. training. Well, think of your brain as as a puppy too, you know. It's the brain is quite dumb. The 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 very proof of it is you constantly auto sabotaging yourself to get to sleep, you know, constantly getting back in these patterns. So it's it's unlike a car you need to fix and you need to be very very patient with it. Um, so. Anytime that you feel from insomnia and it's like 3 a.m., who gives a crap? You know, like, okay, you you will sleep less, but that's pretty much it. I think we're constantly over dramatizing thing. Um, mm -hmm. low you can still function on, on low sleep, you know, and try to do another thing. Uh for OCD folks like me, if you want to be productive, well, read something, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, until you start to feel very tired. I've seen on your LinkedIn, it's uh it's fiction in your case. I think Wikipedia articles are not that far from that, but just having empathy and just being okay. One of these other nights, it's, it's actually like having a baby, I guess. I, I'm about to have mine, but I didn't have them yet. And mm -hmm. it's constant patience with them, waking up for them, losing sleep for them. It's mm -hmm. it's sacrifice and it's a process. So um, last but not least, Lana, where can people find out more about you? Yeah, well, I'm on the uh, social media uh, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram under Lana Walsh Coaching, and lanawalshcoaching.ca is my website. Uh, I'd love to chat with you. I do free consultations, so I'd be happy to chat with you and see what I can do to help you. There you go. Thank you so much. And I am Charles Cormier, host of FounderWisdomPodcast.com. That was Lana Walsh, mesdames et messieurs.